this film, we will consider what to do in case of some of the emergency situations that can arise in the F2H2. These include engine failure, system failure, fire, forced landing, ditching, and emergency escape. If the engine failure occurs before becoming airborne, the airplane may swerve slightly but can be easily controlled. Chop the throttles on both engines, turn the fuel off, and stop straight ahead. In the event of engine failure of one engine immediately after takeoff, you want to work fast. Retract the landing gear, raise the flaps to one half or less. Jettison external fuel tanks if containing fuel. Climb straight ahead at the airspeed which gives the maximum angle of climb. On the dead engine, shut off the throttle and fuel. If both engines fail on takeoff, cut throttles and fuel on both engines. Retract the landing gear, lower full flaps, turn off the battery generator switch, and land straight ahead. In a double flameout at possible engine recovery altitudes, you'll need all the electrical power you can get for starting. So pull all electrical load off the line, including inverter circuit breaker if flight is VFR. In single engine landing, plan the approach carefully to avoid a possible wave off. If space permits, use slightly higher speed and only one half to one quarter flap to improve the performance of the airplane in the event of a wave off. If you have to take a single engine wave off, retract the gear and gain speed before starting to climb. Good pilot technique can compensate for failure of any flight system in the aircraft. This includes failures of generator, battery, fuel transfer, landing gear, aileron boost, and cabin pressurization systems. In case of generator failure, one generator will sustain operation. If the warning lights show that both generators have failed, immediately turn off all equipment not essential to flight. The battery will operate the primary bus or main circuits for only a few minutes. If necessary to operate any items on the other buses, release the guard and move the power switch to emergency or battery only position. Battery failure in flight de-energizes the primary bus only when the landing gear control is in the down position. If the battery fails in flight, lower the landing gear normally. Immediately pull the landing gear circuit breakers and then re-energize the bus by placing the landing gear control in the up position. Bear in mind that flight with gear down is restricted to below 174 knots. Failure of one tip tank to transfer fuel will be indicated by a no reading on the transfer indicator and a gradually increasing heaviness of that wing. Turn both transfer switches to stub tank and trim as necessary. If there is much difference in the weight between tanks, experiment to find the landing approach speed that will give you good lateral control. When you're on the deck, keep the nose wheel down. Use the speed brakes and wheel brakes to slow you down. If the landing gear does not indicate locked down after normal operation, pull the power circuit breaker for the gear that indicates down. Raise gear handle and pull out all landing gear circuit breakers. Put gear handle in down position and pull smartly aft about three inches until it locks. Leave it locked and down. The main landing gear will free fall into down position and the air cylinder will push the nose gear to the down position. Check the indicators to see that the gear is down. If the aileron boost system fails on either or both ailerons, turn the aileron boost switch to off and use the trim tabs and stick to regain normal straight and level flight. If cabin pressurization fails or noxious fumes are present in the cockpit, operate the emergency ventilation control on the right console. If fumes are present, use 100% oxygen. In case of any apparent failure of the oxygen system or symptoms of anoxia, Immediately turn the safety pressure lever and descend below 10,000 feet. Oxygen will be supplied under pressure. If the oxygen regulator becomes inoperative, use the bailout oxygen bottle while you descend to below 10,000 feet. Engine fire in flight will be indicated by the fire warning lights on the main instrument panel. On the affected engine, 
close the throttle and turn the fuel off. An increase in airspeed will help extinguish the flames. In case of electrical fire or short circuit, turn the battery generator switch off. Reset the popped circuit breaker and then turn the battery generator switch on again. If the circuit breaker pops again, leave it alone. In the event of a forced landing due to complete engine failure, the pilot's safety depends on doing the right things at the right time. If the tip tanks contain fuel, jettison them. Issue Mayday call on the radio and turn on the emergency IFF. Canopy locked open. Check safety belt and harness. Fuel off. Throttles closed. Battery generator switch off. Govern the glide to have too much altitude instead of too little at touchdown. When you're sure you can make the runway, turn battery generator switch to battery and lower the wheels and flaps. Carry four to five knots extra speed for landing. Pop the speed brakes after touchdown and use the wheel brakes during the runout. Turn the battery generator switch to off. Normally, a wheels up landing should be made on short runways, cow pastures, or other suitable terrain. For ditching, follow the same general procedures as for forced landing with these differences. If the tip tanks are empty, retain them for extra buoyancy. If full, jettison them. The landing gear should be up for water landings, and the landing should be made in a fully stalled attitude. If the wind is light and swells are heavy, land parallel to the swells, otherwise land into the wind. Check shoulder harness locked and personal gear disconnected. Leave the airplane as quickly as possible. There are two methods of opening the canopy in emergencies. The exterior canopy control, when pulled aft, actuates an air control valve to move the canopy aft. The canopy drive gear box will hold the canopy open against a 40 G forward acting load. The canopy may be also opened by pulling aft on the interior canopy control. Here is the procedure to use the ejection seat. Reduce airspeed if possible. Pull either or both pre-ejection handles up and aft. This forms knee braces, jettisons the canopy, and arms the seat. Put your feet full aft in the stirrups. Pull the ball handle of the oxygen bailout bottle if at altitude. It is important that you sit erect in the seat with spine straight and head pressed against the headrest. Do not tip your head back, however. Grasp the face curtain handles with your elbows close to your body and pull the face curtain until fully extended. Pulling the face curtain fires the catapult. The upward movement of the seat disengages personal gear. As soon as the seat is falling free, after at least a five second delay, pull the ripcord on your parachute. If escape is accomplished at high altitudes, parachute opening should be delayed so that you will free fall to a comfortable altitude. In this film, you have seen emergency procedures for the F2H2 Banshee. You will agree that the best time to consolidate these procedures in your mind is before the emergencies arise.